So we've got uh, total errors. Let's just improve this, this message box. Let's say errors found. Okay, you can see I've used an and sign again to connect um, a variable to a text string. It's a really nice uh, trick. Let's go, let's go lowercase there. There we go, one errors found. Something that gets on my nerves about message boxes is uh, the Microsoft Excel title um, in the message box. Uh, we can get rid of that simply by putting comma, zero, comma, and then the next piece of information is the title of the message box. So let's say data cleanse report. There we go. Okay, play it again. There we go. So now the, um, the title of the message box, data can support one error uh, found. Okay, just to test that, I'm going to create another error. Let's go back to the top. I'm going to um, misspell Basti's name, make Basti Besti. Let's see what happens. Okay, we've now got two errors found. So again, it's, it's a good little reporting mechanism. It's telling us how many errors there are overall in the data. So that's good, but we want, we want it to flag up where the errors are. It'd be really nice if when it went through, it could change the colors of the cell that have errors in. So let's see if we could make it do that. Um, we're going to need to change something in this area because this is the part of the code that deals with if there is an inaccuracy, this code happens. And let's say chriscell.interior.color index, index equals three. Now I think, I'm not sure, but I think that should color the cell red. Okay, so it's gonna increase the value of the total errors variable by one, so it's gonna note down that there's an error, then hopefully, it will change the color of the cell um, to red. Okay, I'm just gonna put an annotation in there. Change to red, there we go. So let's give it a go. Okay, two errors found. We can see Bestie, who was Bestie, has turned to red. And then down at the bottom, we should have one more. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll down a little. There we go. And we see Julia has also turned to red there, okay. So it'd be good now if we could say in the message box that we're building up here, if we could say um, that the errors have been highlighted in red, it would be good if we could tell the user that. And uh, we can introduce an underscore here. Uh, if you put an underscore in, it means that uh, you can continue the same line of code on a new line. Okay, it means you don't have to keep, keep going across and um, using a horizontal scrolling, that's really annoying. So you can just use an underscore there, but in fact, it's gonna be better for me to put an underscore here. And then I want this code to appear on a new line. So I can say and sign VB new line, VB new line, and sign VB new line. That's gonna create a new line. And then we can say uh, errors highlighted in red. In red. There we go, underscore. Okay, that's good. So I've used underscores there. I can see the code. It avoids annoying uh, scrolling. So we're expecting um, that the cells to be highlighted in red, and we're expecting for this mini report to flash up at the end in a message box form to tell us what's happened. Let's try playing that. Okay, data cleanse report, two errors found, errors highlighted in red. Okay, good. So let's create another um, error there, just change Sven's name. So now we'd expect three errors and the errors highlighted in red. That's really good. Let's, we've introduced a problem here. As often happens, if you improve code, you're gonna create a problem somewhere else. If we now correct Sven's name, then it's still, it's still going to be highlighted in red, okay? That's because it was previously highlighted in red and we don't say anywhere in the code to um, to clear the cell colors before the code is run, okay? Which is what we have to do. We have to kind of reset the colors of the cells so that only the cells that have errors in uh, will um, appear red, 
Okay, so how might we do that? Um, so let's take this reference. This is the dynamic reference that we created in the first video to the whole to 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 the whole range of cells. Okay, and let's say a color index. I think white is one, but I'm not sure. This may may make everything black. Let's let's see. Whoops. There we go. Okay, let's run this code. Yeah, there we go. We can see I've changed everything to black there. Um, so if I just change this to zero and then I'm going to put a, an annotation in to say reset cell colors. Cell colors. Okay, there we go. So that should reset the colors to white before it runs the code. Okay, no, that hasn't actually happened. Let's just try zero again. There we go, that seems to be working. Okay, so zero must be white, and then it's telling us there's two errors, and the errors are highlighted in red. So to test this, I'm going to reset Basti, Bestie to Basti, which is his proper name. I'm going to change uh, Folk make a, an error there, and let's just change Eric, Erica to Eric again. Let's see if it can deal with that. Okay, good, so we've got three errors found. You can see Basti's name is no longer highlighted in red. That's because we introduced the code at the beginning of the routine to reset uh, the cell covers. Okay, and it's giving us a really nice report at the end. We can then subsequently scroll back up the list um, find those red cells and just uh, and just make the changes, make the corrections ourselves. Okay, great. So that's the end of, of, of this series. We've used uh, the idea of collections uh, in Excel and um, Excel recognizes different kinds of collections. The collection of cells uh, in a spreadsheet is, is the one we use, but Excel also recognizes a collection of workbooks that are currently open, Excel recognizes a collection of worksheets in a workbook. So if we can harness that pre-existing knowledge in Excel, uh, we can loop through all of, the thing, all of the things in the collection. In this case, we loop through the cells uh, to get things done. So that's collections. And there's some, some good coding uh, ideas we've used here. Firstly, the idea of uh, combining uh, worksheet formulae with code. And this is, this is a great way to really maximize or you know, optimize what you're doing. So you can do some things in the worksheet, some nice formulae. We use some counting formulae, count, uh, count if and count a, to understand how long that list is. Combine those formulae, reference those formulae in the code, combine the two together to create really powerful functionality. So that's something else to bear in mind, combining worksheet formulae and code together. And we've got some really nice dynamic functionality. So even if that list gets shorter, that list gets longer, um, our code is going to be able to handle that and it's still going to work well. And then we've looped through each cell in the collection and used a conditional statement. We've used an if. We've used an if statement to show, um, to tell Excel to do something uh, if there's a problem. And then finally, uh, in, in the final video, um, we got Excel uh, to, to stop the code, to exit the sub, to stop the code if there's a problem. And then the last thing we did was rather than stopping the code if there's a problem, we said run through the whole thing and then give me a mini report at the end so I can see the errors and then subsequently you know, go through myself very quickly. So hopefully if you think about how you might apply this in real life, you can very easily tweak parts of this technique to your situation. It should save you uh, a huge amount of time and you know a huge amount of stress as well. So that's it for this video series. Hope it was helpful and I hope you'll join me in another video series on the channel.